Hi, assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 3, the periodic table. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 3.2 periodicity, part 1 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to explain the variation in atomic radii across a period, across the first row of the transition elements, and down the group. So this is going to be covered in part 1 of the video, which is in this video. So, without any further ado, let us start. So, atomic radii. So, atomic radii is basically very, very difficult to be defined because the electron cloud has no clear boundary. So, you know that in an atom, there's going to be an electron cloud. So, the electron cloud has no definite boundary that we can directly measure the radius. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to take the atomic radius by half of the distance between the nuclei of the two adjacent identical atom. So what is meant by this words? We're going to take two of the similar atoms together, for example, sodium and sodium. When we put it close enough together, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the center of the nucleus with the center of the nucleus. So what we're going to get here is a diameter. So from the diameter, what we're going to get is the radius when we divided it by 2. And from the radius, you can also work out the volume. But for chemistry, we're going to focus more on the, radii, on the radius or the radii part. Okay? And as what you can see on the right-hand side here, um, this is the atomic radii for each atom that is obtained experimentally. Okay? So as what you can see here, across the, across the period, you can see that the sizes, the size is going to get smaller, okay? Or the atomic radii is going to get smaller. However, when it goes down the group, the sizes is going to get higher, okay? So now, there are two factors or two major factors that are going to affect the size of atom in the periodic table. So first, we have the effective nuclear charge or written as ZF. And the second part is the shielding effect, or known as the screen effect. So let us look into the effective nuclear charge, which is ZEF first. So effective nuclear charge. So the effective nuclear charge is basically the positive charge of the nucleus that is held by the valence electron, which is the electron at the outermost shell. And the way that we calculate the ZEF can be obtained using this formula here, where Z minus S. So the Z here refers to the, the number of proton or the proton number, and the S here refers to the number of electron filled at the inner orbital, dalam orbital dalaman. Alright, to understand more about this, like, let us look into the example below here. So let's say we have lithium. So lithium will have three proton, and when we write down the electronic configuration, which is one S two two S one, uh, we can calculate the Z easily. So you know that Z is equal to Z minus S, and then your proton number here, which refers to 3, and then your S here, which is the inner electron. Okay, so the inner orbital is going to be this one, and this one is the outermost orbital. So the inner orbital has 2 electrons. So that is why we got 2 here. So 3 minus 2 is going to have 1. Okay. Now let us look into the next example here. 11. Or ele the proton number of the sodium is 11. So when we work out the SPDF notation, what we're going to get is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. So we can calculate the ZF by using the formula given as here, which is ZF is equal to Z minus S. So our proton number here is equal to 11. Okay? And our inner orbital, the electrons, the number of electrons in the inner orbital, going to be 2 plus 2 plus 6. So we're going to get 10. So it's going to be 11 minus 10. And lastly, you get the Z to be plus 1. Alright, now let us look into aluminium. So for aluminium, uh, you can calculate the Z similarly as before. So you know that the Z here, the Z here, uh, refers to the proton number which is 13. Okay, and then the number of electrons in the inner orbital. So, number 3 and number 3, this one is the outermost orbital because it has the highest principal quantum number. So, this is the 
inner orbital. And the number of electron here, we're going to have 10 altogether. So it's going to be 13 minus 10. And lastly, we're going to get plus 3. Okay? So what we can relate from here is that the higher the value of Zeph means that it will have a stronger nucleus attraction towards the valence electron. Okay? So this is the first factor. Now we're going to look into the second factor, which is the shielding effect. So, the shielding effect is also known as the screening effect, where this screening effect is, called, is caused by the mature repulsion between electrons of the inner shell and the valence electron. So, they are causes by repulsion. So, we have electrons on the inner shell, and then you know that the electron carried a negatively charged. Okay? So, the electron from the inner shell will have a repulsion with the valence electron at the outermost shell. And because of the repulsion, they're going to spread a bit more. Okay? In order to neutralize the repulsive effect. And um, the repulsion uh, not just occur from this inner with the outer, it can also happen from this electron here with this electron here in the stem shell. However, it is less effective. And for that reason, we're going to focus more on the repulsion between the inner orbital with the valence electron. Alright, so there are the two factors. Now, we're going to see on how the atomic radii changes across a period. As what you can see here, across a period, you can see that the atomic radii gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Why is that? So the reason for that is across the period, you can see that the proton number increases. And therefore, when the proton number increases, the effective nuclear charge will also increase. So you can, you can see it up here. Okay, so you can imagine it to be like this. For example, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. So when you write the electronic configuration and you calculate the ZEF, you can see that the ZEF increases from plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, plus 6. So it keeps on increasing when it, when it goes to the right. Okay, And because the ZEF increases, it means that the force of attraction between the nucleus, which is positively charged, and the electron, which is negatively charged, will get higher. And hence, the forces of attraction of the nucleus to the valence electron will become stronger. And this causes the valence shell electron to be drawn closer to the nucleus, and the electrons are pulled inward. And as a result, the size of atoms, or the atomic radii, decreases. Alright? Now we're going to see the effect or the variation of atomic radii down the group. So, as what you can see, down the group, the atomic radii increases. Why is that? So, when going down the group, what you can actually see is that the principal quantum number increases, in which it is denoted by the larger value of n. So, you can also look at it here, where the hydrogen will have 1s1. The lithium, which is the next period, will have 1s2, 2s1, sodium we're going to have 3s1. So you know that the number of n will keep on increasing, which means the number of electrons keep on increasing as well. Okay, And because of this, there are going to be more inner electrons that are present in order to shield the valence electron from the nuclear charge as they are more completed electron shell. Okay, Will the principal quantum number bertambah bilangan shell pun akan bertambah. And when the shell increases, there are more electrons. So because of more electron, the shielding effect as well as the mutual repulsion can also increase. And this will cause the attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron to be decreases. Okay? And as a result, the size of the atom or the atomic radii increases. Right? Now, we're going to look into the variation of atomic radii across the first row of the transition element. So transition elements here refers to the B block. Okay, so 
the atomic radii of the first row of the transition element is constant across the period. Okay, so this is the sizes here. At first, it's gonna like decrease a bit and then become constant. But generally, we're gonna say that the size has not much changes, so it is considered constant for the transition element. But why does the size became constant? What's happening here? So essentially, what we can say that across a period here, across the first row of the transition element here, you can see that the proton number increases. So from 21, it goes to 22, 23, and so on up to 30. And when the proton number increases, the nuclear charge, which is the charge inside the nucleus, will increase as well. At the same time, Across the first row of the transition element, electron is added to the inner 3D subshell. Okay, what is meant by this statement was that you know that for the transition element, it's going to have a configuration of 3D1 or S2, for example. Okay, so when we go across a uh, first row of the transition element, the number of electron in the 3D will keep on increasing. From 3D2, it will become 3D3. 3D4 and then 3D5, etc. And then the 4S2 will constant. So basically, the electrons are added in the inner 3D shell. Okay. Meanwhile, the 4S will remain constant. Okay, the 4S2. Okay. And the inner 3D, because electrons at the inner orbital will then shield the valence electron of the 4S electron. So what's happened here is that as what you will expect, because of the proton number increases, you will see that the size is supposed to be decreases. Correct? Okay, bila proton number bertambah, daya tarikan pun akan lebih kuat. And therefore, logically, the size will decreases from this first statement. However, from the statement here, when the electron is keep on adding at the inner 3D sharp sub shell, you're going to see that across a period, the size is going to get increases. Okay? So it's like a very contracted statement. Statement yang bercanggah. So because of this, you can see that the effect of the increase in the nuclear charge or increasing number of proton will be cancelled out by the screening effect. Okay? So yang proton number tadi akan menyebabkan makin lama makin mengecil. Manakala repulsion dia akan menyebabkan dia makin lama, makin membesar. So, satu kecil, satu besar. So, it's going to cancel out each other effect. And because of this, um, the size will not change as much. And we can say that it remains constant. Okay? And as what you can see here, we are talking about the nuclear charge, which is the proton number. However, the staff here remains constant. Okay? To visualize more about this, uh, you can look about here. So this is what I meant by this. So, uh, so you can see that it is across a first row of the transition element. You can see that the proton number increases. Okay, from 21 up to 30. And then the number, because of the proton number increases, the size is supposed to get smaller. Okay. However, because of the increase in electron in the inner orbital of the 3D orbital, the size will get higher. So one effect will cause it to be smaller, the other effect will cause the size to be larger, and because of this effect, it will cancel out each other, and that is why we can see that the size will almost be the same, or we can say it to be constant. Okay, and if you were to calculate the ZEF, the ZEF here is the net charge in the nucleus that is felt by valence electron is basically the same. Okay? What changes, what we're going to, the factors that considered in the first row of transition element is the proton number as well as the inner electron in the 3D shell. Alright? So I hope this clear out the concepts in which the size is going to get constant. Okay. And this is going to summarize 
the variation of the atomic radii that we have learned. So uh, down the group, the sizes will get larger and larger and larger because of the increase in the principal quantum number. Across a period, the sizes will get smaller and smaller and smaller because of the increase in quantum number, which influenced by the depth, okay, the effective nuclear charge. Meanwhile, here in the transition element, we can see that the size is going to remain constant. Okay, and the way that you can memorize it, you can see it to be naik bukit, okay, climb a hill, and then you're gonna pacak the bendera. Okay, and then at the middle here is the constant. Okay, so naik bukit, the sizes will get smaller up to the group, and then the size will get smaller as you go across to the right hand side. And then the constant here refers to the transition element. Alright. Now we're going to do the last exercise here, which is the example one. So the figure shows part of the periodic table of elements. So we have Q, R, P, X, and Y, and it does not represent the actual symbol of the element. So we need to arrange Q, R, P, X, and Y according to the increase in the atomic radius. Okay, so as what you can see here, Q and R is in period two. Meanwhile, the T, X, and Y here are in the period three. So logically, you will know that the T, X, Y going to be larger than Q and R, okay? Because they are in the higher principal quantum number, okay? So amongst the three, the T, X, and Y, the Y going to be the smallest one. Because you know that across a period, the Z increases and therefore the size decreases. So Y going to be the smallest, followed by X, followed by T. Okay, so T is the largest one. Okay, similarly, we now going to proceed to the period number two. So Y is supposed to be larger than R, okay, followed by X. Okay, similar concept. So across a period, the quarter number increases, so your Z increases, and hence you will, you will experience a stronger force of attraction between the valence electron and the nucleus, and hence your sizes become smaller and smaller and smaller. So R is the smallest. Sorry, sorry, R is the smallest, followed by Q, and then Y, X, and T. E. Okay, so the answer here is going to be R, Q, Y, X, and T, e, where T e is the largest and R is the smallest. Alright, so I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye!